Good morning everyone, welcome again to our flying field. This day has turned out to be so hot, so hot indeed. Uh, very humid as well. Just in distance over there we've got a couple of uh, buzzards. Uh, we have a, one or two families of buzzards around here. Some of our planes they like and some of them they don't. As demonstrated by my depth on Eagle when they, uh, I took it up too high and it came down in a few bits after they attacked it. Oh well, never mind. Um, right, I've just been calming down after my remaiden of the Motion RC 64mm A10 tank buster. Uh, as you can see, I've got it down in one piece, but I have had to go and change my underwear. There you go. Right, next on the list, we've got the Jumper T Lite, which I've paired up with the HDL RC. Sector 132, this is the 4K version, which I believe is that the Cadex Tarsier. Um, it's got, uh, let's have a look at what motors it's got, 1104, 2800 KB. So uh, some quite little feisty motors there. Um, also in the box, uh, I should add that this one has the Wi-Fi, this is the Wi-Fi version, the little Wi-Fi uh, aerial is down there and, and you can adjust it via the Cadex F FPV if you need to adjust any settings. Um, in addition, uh, once it's all connected in your via your FPV goggles, uh, if you move the throttle stick to the left and the elevator stick to the up position, you can enter the FPV screen menu as well and you can make some adjustments there. Okay, right, let's have a quick look what's in the box. A little data sheet for the 132. Uh, a spare set of um, these 2.5 inch propellers, I think they are. Let's have a look. 5 by 3, 2, 2.5, 2 yes. And you get a, it looks like, a set or one and a bit set of three inch propellers as well so if you want to use the three inch uh, props you'll need to take these propeller guards off um i'm going to test it as a whoop uh, for the time being also in the box you have multiple sets of different screws obviously um just be aware if you are taking these props off you'll need to use the shorter mounting screws uh you also have uh, some mounting options here for things like a GoPro camera or an action camera and a, a box type action, action camera there if you want to use and you also got some arm guards there as well so necess necessitating the even longer screws which I'm assuming are these ones uh, you also got a couple of stickers a quality control sticker a couple of stickers there and a battery strap Okay, with all that said and done, let's get it all connected up and we will go for an FPV flight and see how well she does. See you shortly.
all in all, that wasn't a bad flight, was it? Um, it's what I expect from a whoop of this size, and I suppose it is a very large whoop, isn't it? Um, the memory card I'm using is a SanDisk, I believe it's a U3. Yep, U3 Class 10. Uh, so hopefully, uh, because I am aware that the Tarsier and the other one, uh, I forget the name of it, uh, do get very, very hot. So you need a almost a heat resistant micro SD memory card to use in these things. Um, what's, the, what's the other one I've got? I think it's the Gep RC Tiny Go. That also requires a very, very high spec micro SD memory card in order to operate. Um, I did try using a class 10 in that one. It worked for a short while, um, but then it, it seemed the electronics overwhelmed it and it was unable to record. Uh, but this is seems to be very, very good. Uh, it seems to have good, good quality manufactured components inside. The FPV feed that I was getting from the goggles was solid. A little bit of break up, around about 250 meters away, but it went, it came and went within seconds. Hopefully, the footage has recorded on here. Uh, it's a very, very hot day, so it might be too much for the micro SD memory card. I don't know, but it apparently is the right one for this, um, for the Cadex Tarsier. And I think this is the Tarsier. I can't think of what other model um, it might be. Uh, put comments below in the comment section if you think I've got it wrong. I'll, and uh, I'll make a full admission if I have. Um, the... Uh, RX I'm using is an FR Sky XM Plus non-EU firmware which bound straight away to the little jumper T light which has got oh, an excess of four FR Sky protocols on, on this so one of those is going to fit um, uh, to bind with this uh, even if you've got uh, non-EU firmware receivers. So anyway, that's my little take on the HGL RC Sector 132. Um, this is another one. Yes, I've had an, this one again for, must be six months now. And this is the first time I've uh, really taken it out. I, I always try these things out in the garden, of course, when I can. But uh, uh, trying to get the time uh, to come up here on a beautiful day like this uh, is very rare indeed. Anyway, I think I've got uh, one or two more videos to do today while I've got the time. So uh, until then, take care, stay safe, and we'll see you on the next video. Goodbye for now.